I'm here with a gal by the name of D. Billingsley, uh, formerly, or D. Ames. What, what do you go Billings. B B D. Billings, I'm sorry. And I'm interviewing her in regards to uh, a case in regards to a Lionel Scott Ellison, a case that she had to deal with years ago. Uh, Dee, could you tell us the date and the time? Today is June 27th, 2014, and it's about 1.45 p.m. Okay. Tell me, just a few years ago, you had a, a situation where you had to call upon law enforcement to help you. Is that correct? Yes. And I believe it was the both the police and the sheriff department? Uh, the sheriff department is who I called. I think they did involve the police in some of what happened. So. Okay, so mainly who, who you did, did you deal with? One of the detectives. Would it be um, Frank Fritz? Yes, he was the last one, I think. Okay, but you dealt with him the most. How about a Bofto? I dealt with him a little bit. Okay. And you, do you remember any of the officers with the police department? No, I don't. Uh, okay. Um, there was a situation where you called, what was that? Was that in an abuse case? Um, what, what was Fire it? was set to a car that I owned and an apartment building where I lived three times. Okay, by? They assume, well, the car, they can prove that Mr. Ellison set the fire. They caught him on camera. The apartment building, they're pretty sure that he set it or had somebody set it, but they could never prove it. What apartment building was that? It's out in Warden. Out in Warden. Okay. Did that make the uh, other news or anything? That... I don't remember. Okay. Um, and so you were a victim because it was your car? Because it was my car and my belongings, and I was in a relationship with him. Okay. Um, okay. How long were you in a relationship with him? About a year. About a year. Okay. And can you tell me, Dee, um, for example, with that fire of the car, of your car, what took place with that? He was taking the car in to have some repairs done for me. And I got a call saying that he was being taken to the emergency room because the car had caught on fire. Later, the detectives told me that they were able to see him on film because he did this in front of a rental car place. I don't remember which one it is. Avis? Avis on down by Stella's. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. Um, they were able to see that he got out of the car and that he went to the trunk and did something and then got back into the car and then shortly thereafter was the fire. So, Did it show what he did on that videotape at all? You know, I did just remember them saying that they could see him get out of the car, they could see him go to the trunk and do something in the trunk um, and then shut the trunk. I didn't see the video, the detectives oh, oh, did. Okay. Who was that, the sheriff department? Yes. So would that have been Detective Frank Fritz? Who told you that? You know, I don't remember which one it was. Okay, but it's, one of the it's detectives. Been quite a while. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, there was a um, the state had a gentleman by name of Douglas Machine, who the state uses as their expert uh, guy for videos. The police department uses it. The sheriff department uses it. Do you know who that guy is? No, I don't. Well, he's the, the county attorney's expert. Um, did the um, County attorney tell you that that tape existed, or did you find it out? Detectives told me that it existed. Oh, okay. But I think it was after they already had it and had it looked at. So. Okay, and did you go to that case at all to the court case? No, or they, you I didn't did have not. to testify. No, I did not. How did that, all that feel with your um, vehicle burning up? I mean, how, how did that? Is that? You feel like. Something, one, you don't feel safe because somebody has, they may not have hurt you physically, but they've hurt you. Um, you've lost a belonging, something that, and at the time I could not afford to replace it. I had bought that car for my daughter who was graduating. Um, there was no way to replace it. I had no means of replacing that. It, you, I guess, violated is the way that you feel when somebody does something like this. Mm -hmm. Did um, Frank Fritz uh, or the, uh, Scott Twido, did he ever discuss that uh, videotape with you at all? I don't remember who it was that 
I talked to at the sheriff's. I was at the sheriff's department, and there was two or three of them in there. Of, of detectives? Yeah. And they sat me down and talked to me and, and told me that they had that proof and that they were, you know, able to tell that he had, in fact, started the car on fire and that they could prove that. That they could prove it? Yeah. Now, did, uh, did you ever go to uh, the detective division or the county attorney's office and ever ask them that if charges weren't accurate in regards to, to anything ever? No, I did not. Okay. Um, did, um, has Mr. Uh, Allison ever come and talked to you since that case? He's not supposed to come anywhere near okay. me. Did you have to get a restraining order or what? I did at one point, mm -hmm. and I think in the case it also said that he wasn't supposed to. Okay. Um, but there's not, was there, but there's not an active uh, restraining order now on him, or so. yeah, I don't know how long those last, yeah. or if they are ever permanent. Okay. I, you know, I never really checked into it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, were there other people that, by chance, I mean, I mean you. That's tra kind of traumatic for you, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it that, definitely know, was traumatic. You lost your belongings in there. Um, what was that car valued at, do you think? I... It was an older car, and I, I don't remember. It was valued at somewhere close to 3000 I think. Okay, um, and that was your only car? I had another car. Okay. Um, I had a little Mazda Miata. Um, and some damage had been done to that too, not by fire, but by vandalism. And we were never able to prove who did that, but we, it was within the same time period that these other things happened. And so we're pretty sure, you know, he either did it or had somebody do it. Did you ever talk to uh, uh, county, Deputy County Attorney uh, Julie Mees ever? No. Okay, you never spoken with her ever? I don't think so. She's the one that prosecuted him on that case? No, I haven't. I had a victim um, advocate and I'm trying to from remember. the county attorney's office, and I don't remember what her name is now. I had her number for a long time, um, and I used to talk to her. Okay. Did that help you? Yes. So did. did the county attorney's office with the victim at uh, what do you call it? A victim victim advocate. Advocate. Did that help kind of work you through all this the mess? It did, because if I had questions or concerns, mm -hmm. I was able to call her and she either told me who to call or she contacted somebody. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there was a couple times that she contacted the sheriff's department and then the detectives would come talk to me. Okay. Um, so referring to D Detective Frank Fritz and Detective Bofdo? Yeah. Okay. Um, so would when people, females, go through crime or are victims of crime, uh, do you feel that you got adequate help with the county attorney's office or the victim advocate uh, people? She was wonderful. Okay. And they um, you know, and I probably could have requested more information or, you know, done a few more things, but I, at the time, just wanted to not have to worry about it, to not have to think about it, to just move on. You don't exactly just move on, okay. but... Um, you know, you kind of try to escape it, you try to ignore it, I guess. I probably should have, could have gotten more information and more help. Um, but what I did get was good. So. Did you have outside support, family, friends? Yes, who I do. I have a very good moral support from my family and my friends. I'm very lucky that way. I know not everybody has that. Um, were you aware of the, did the uh, county attorney's office tell you that their own, what their own experts said in court? No. Uh, would you like me to read it to you? Sure. Okay. Uh, the uh, state's own witness claimed that the state's evidence in the arson case was bogus, that the state's witness, Douglas Machane, calls the state's evidence as poor, inadmissible, and according to uh, court records, uh, McShane states that while video capture is good, idea for the variety of purpose to reduce employee shrinkage of inventory theft to, to prevent fall or possible negligence during liability incidents, to motivate employees to be more productive with their time on a job, etc. Some video is used to identify individuals or objects for the purpose of making assertions in, uh, in legal proceedings. Then he goes on and says, 
uh, quote, video is introduced as evidence with the intention of proving a point. The state, unquote, the state's own expert then tells the court that, quote, relevant evidence proves or disproves a fact, but it doesn't necessarily prove anyone's guilt or innocent. Even if the individual's claim that 1536.30 is, in fact, Scott Ellison, for example, his actions cannot clearly be seen, therefore his intent cannot be determined, unquote. What does that mean to you? It sounds like they're saying that they could not 100% say we can see exactly what he's doing, we can see that it's him. I'm sure they went by the fact that he was driving the car, that the ambulance came to get him and he, you know, was the driver. So, if he wasn't, actually didn't do it, if, 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 if. he didn't do it, uh, would you feel that it, it would be a travesty of justice that he was charged for that crime? When, when, in fact, the state's own witness, Douglas Machine, states that they can't prove it. If that was the only piece of evidence that they had and that they were going on, then it would be unjustified. Okay. And, and in that case, if it was unjustified, then Mr. Ellison uh, should be exonerated from this. Correct? If he didn't do if, it? If if they could not prove it, I'm, you know. Okay. I, I'm only going by what the state's yeah. witness say. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, let's say that um, he goes on then and says, quote, In summary, the video evidence presented here is hardly reliable beyond this. It does not seem to be to demonstrate that there was a fire, then smoke, then activity from one and possibly two or even three barely visible individuals located directly behind some of the vehicles parked 60 plus from the camera on the Avis parking lot on the day and at the time noted from within the stamp of the video, unquote. So basically he's saying they can't, they don't have, you know, it's not clear they couldn't tell. Um, and that, is that what you get out of that too, kind of? When you read yeah. that, yes. Okay. Um, Nevertheless, you went through it, you've experienced uh, 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 trauma having to deal with all this. If you had somebody that you knew that was going through the same thing that you went through, what would be your, your advice from whether if it was a, a girl or even a guy, I'm sure guys go through it too, yeah. what would be your advice to them to get them through what you went through? And, and, it may be different situation, different circumstance, right. but what would your advice be to other people in the public who have, who are experiencing crime against, uh, alleged crime against them? First, I would say they need to listen to their gut instincts, and then secondly, they need to call and ask for somebody to check it out, somebody to look at it, and you know, right. if they need protection, if they need to be told that yes, this is happened or happening. Um, big thing is listen to your gut instincts. Don't let somebody tell you that you're imagining things, that it's not happening, that it's not true, because it gets to a point when you, it escalates. It escalates to a point where somebody ends up getting hurt. Um, so reach out and get the help that you can. There's lots of different organizations or you know the sheriff's department or the police they'll put you in contact with the right people and you went reached out for help for from for those the right people correct yes okay good enough this interview then is now done it is uh, two o'clock and today is what day june 27th june 27th and again i'm uh, this is montana news i'm with uh D. Billings. Billings, who is a Billings resident and also uh, suffered was a victim of a of a uh, alleged or crime here in Billings uh, by a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Scott Lionel Ellison. This concludes this uh, r uh, report.